This episode is actually pretty on point with its jokes, guys. Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the 18th episode of the show Power Rangers Turbo, as well as the 223rd episode overall, titled Passing the Torch Part 1. We begin this episode underwater on the ship where we see that Divatox is sleeping in her bed. Suddenly a figure appears in one of the windows before reappearing before Divatox. It is Divatox's mother who commands her attention. She explains that they've always been legendary in the space pirate community, which apparently is like, I don't know, maybe they have a subreddit or something. But Divatox has actually made things really terrible for them. Divatox asks her mom for advice so that she doesn't fail all the time, and her mom says to just get rid of the Power Rangers, and Divatox asks for like more real advice. She then tells him to remove the leader, which echoes softly, and by echo I mean she just keeps saying it. Divatox gets stoked about this idea and she plans to kill Tommy. Hooray! Out on the road, Kat and Tommy are driving in Tommy's truck, and Kat is very impressed that Tommy was actually on time today. They talk about how they're going camping with the others, and how Justin was very excited, so he actually got up at the crack of dawn for this. Kat says it's like she was there when he woke up. I hate this relationship between Kat and Justin. On a random bus, a girl is listening to music and singing terribly. Passengers are yelling for her to shut up, and a guy next to her taps her on the shoulder, and she explains that she can't hear him. She takes off her headphones, and he explains that she needs to shut up because other people are mad. They introduce themselves. He is TJ and she is Cassie. She's heading to Stone Canyon to be with some relatives so that she can crash the music scene because she wants to be a singer. Girl, you need lessons. TJ is heading for Angel Grove. On the ship, Divatox tosses Elgar aside, exclaiming that they're targeting Tommy now. She wants the Parantrons to get to the shore. We then see a fleet of them on bikes going down the road. They're tailing Tommy and Kat who see them. Tommy immediately decides to toss the laws of the road aside, going off-road into a field while they're being chased. What are they so terrified of? They beat these guys pretty easily, like every other time. After what feels like three years of a car chase, Tommy exclaims that there's too many of them. There's literally four. At the campsite, Tanya has finished putting up the tent and she walks over to Adam and Justin who have collected firewood. Adam is surprised Tommy and Kat aren't there yet and Tanya points out that Tommy's always late. I like this has been like a terrible flaw of Tommy's for a very long time. That and that he's super forgetful. Basically, Tommy sucks. They focus on getting the camp together. Then we go back to Cassie and TJ, and TJ explains that he wants to go to Angel Grove because he wants to go play baseball for Angel Grove. Cassie asks if he's any good, and he said he'll find out. Then he asks her if she's any good with singing. Uh, no dude, you heard her. She's terrible. But Cassie lies and says that she's going to find out too. The bus makes a stop at a rest stop, and the driver tells the passengers that they have 15 minutes to themselves. They all start to unload from the bus, walking into the rest stop. Cassie and TJ walk over to a sunglass tower, and Cassie starts trying on sunglasses while TJ checks out some postcards. TJ then finds terrible sunglasses for Cassie to wear, and then he shakes his head about them. Why well, does this feel like a casting side that got slipped into the actual script? Meanwhile, Tommy and Kat are getting blown up. Yup. Anyways, TJ's now outside, and Cassie shows him a hat. Anyways, now Kat has jumped from the car, and she's dropped her turbo key. Tommy's tires get shot out finally, and as he goes out in slow motion, they fire at him, blowing up his entire car. Jesus Christ. Tommy falls to the ground, knocked out, and Kat is screaming for him. Then TJ gets up, running away. He thinks he heard someone who needs help. He runs off and Cassie yells after him because the bus is leaving soon. Meanwhile, Kat tried to get to Tommy, but then she gets cut off by some piranotrons before he decides that she just has to leisurely run away while they just don't drive at full speed behind her. Divatox decides to make sure that the rangers don't save Tommy, so she releases two putrepods. Remember those? I guess they just found those suits again. She also calls out for a new monster to heat things up, Flamite. Adam and Tanya are arguing playfully with one another while they try to attempt to hang a hammock. There's no way these two haven't been dating since like episode 5 of Zeo at this point. Justin hears something in a bush and he decides to check it out himself because Adam and Tanya are still arguing. He walks around and unknowingly a future pod egg appears. Then Flamite is there too, seeing Justin. He runs after him, jumping over him. Then he spits a literal fire at Justin. Adam and Tanya have gotten the hammock up and Adam says that the trick of the hammock is no sudden movements. You just have to relax. Then Justin yells for help and Adam falls out of the hammock. They run to help him, but the putrepod pod appears in front of them. While Cassie is trying to reason with the bus driver to stay and wait for TJ and he tells her he has a schedule to keep. The bus leaves and we see that Cassie stayed behind to find TJ. Who knows why? Then she dishes her luggage in a bush because she hears Kat yelling and she goes that way. Kat gets cornered by the piranotrons and she is struggling for some reason against them. TJ is there and he finds the car on fire. Cassie runs up, scaring him, and they see Kat fighting off the piranotrons. TJ says he wants to help Kat, and Cassie pulls him back, but he goes anyways, and Cassie follows. Then we see that the other putrepod is in the field, hatching. Cassie and TJ run past a knocked out Tommy, not even noticing him. Great work, everyone. Then more damn piranotrons show up, attacking Cassie and TJ, who are actually doing pretty well against them. Get it together, Kat. 
Then Justin gets away from Flamite, taking out his key to morph, but then it gets knocked out of his hand by the monster. I feel like these keys have proven to be a pretty bad idea for a morpher. Then Tanya and Adam are fighting the Future Pod, and they hear Justin yell for help. Then Tanya lures it away, getting it tangled in the hammock. I guess that counts as defeating it now, and they run to help Justin. Flamite has Justin up in the air, and Tanya and Adam go to help him. Meanwhile, Kat is running away again, and she gets distracted because TJ and Cassie are fighting Piranatrons, and she asks who they are. Then Cassie does some good moves again, and TJ asks where she learned to do that, and Cassie says, my ancestors invented it. Oh my god, that's hilarious, but also kind of racist, because Cassie's Asian. Like, come on. Adam and Tanya try to get Flamite to let Justin go, but they can't, and they figure out that Justin can't morph. Tanya gets hit back, and she hears from Alpha that Tommy and Kat are in trouble. First of all, that happened like 20 minutes ago. Come on, Alpha. Secondly, Tanya's rude as hell to Alpha says, well, I got news for you, Alpha, so are we. Clearly mad that Alpha is sleeping on the job. Cat is fighting more piranhas because that's all this damn episode is. Then the Future Pod is now walking around, stalking towards Tommy. Cassie and TJ are still fighting, and Cassie yells how this is crazy, and she doesn't really want to be involved in all this. Same. They run to help Cat because even strangers have to save her at this point. Then Adam and Tanya try to morph, but Flame Might hits their keys away. Seriously, guys, we're never doing a two piece morpher again. TJ launches into a kick, saving Cat, and Cassie wants to know why they're attacking her, but they don't get too much info because they get attacked again. Kat runs off to find Tommy, and she finds him getting dragged away by the Future Pod, and Kat gets held back, screaming for Tommy. You get it. Justin gets his key back, and Adam rolls out of the way from the fire, getting his key back, which he tosses around because the metal is hot. <laughs> I love little touches like this. Then he gets Tanya's key, and they hear from Alpha about Tommy and Kat, so they run away to handle it. Mm, feel like the fire monster in the forest needs to be tended to first, but okay. Kat is screaming about Tommy, and Cassie tells her, we gotta go already, and then they get attacked again by Piranatrons. Cat just watches them fight. Like, do something, Cat. You're the Power Ranger. In a cave, the Future Pod tosses a stirring Tommy onto the ground. We see that Divatox is there, stoked that she has Tommy. She's very happy about this. To be continued. This episode's seriously just a giant, like, Piranatron fight while also being unintentionally hilarious. I mean, we kept coming back from this intense peril of Cat and Tommy getting their car blown up to a 90s summer jam while Cassie and TJ tried on sunglasses. Like, what? I like TJ and Cassie already because TJ actually wants to do stuff and Cassie feels like a real girl. Not the perfect stereotype that they tend to project on female characters on this show. She actually seems kind of lazy and unwilling to do much for others, and I like that. Unfortunately, her actress is not great. Her delivery is pretty stilted and sometimes it sounds like she's just reading the script in her head for the first time while she's saying it out loud, if that makes sense. So next time a very big event will occur, so get ready for that. But until then, may the power protect you.